Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Software Engineering at Salesforce. My name is Brooks Johnson, and this week we're going to be talking about one of the most fundamental techniques or algorithms in computer science, binary search and divide and conquer. So stick around. It's going to be a good one. And what divide and conquer is all about. And in this case, divide and conquer, all we're really talking about with any divide and conquer algorithm is in some way it's going to throw away half of the problem set every time. So if you remember before when we did linear search, and this is like we're going to play the number guessing game. And I've got a list of numbers, 1 through 10. And maybe I'm thinking of the number 8. I'm going to ask you to guess the number. Linear search is just going to go, is it 1? Is it 2? Is it 3? Right? Just like that, until it gets the number. So worst case for linear search is always going to be the same size of the number of inputs because the number may be at the far end of the list. Right? So you, 100 inputs might take 100 steps. 1,000 inputs might take 1,000 steps. That's how linear search works. But it doesn't need the data to be sorted. Binary search does require the data to be sorted, but binary search runs in logarithmic time which means that it increases at a really, really slow rate. So if you don't remember high school math, don't really worry about it that much, but logarithms are just kind of the reverse of an exponent, right? So while exponents increase very quickly, logarithms increase very, very slowly. And we'll demonstrate some of that in anonymous apex towards the end here. Um, but if we were to do a binary search on that same problem, guess the number, and this is what we're gonna implement in apex here shortly, Right, and again, let's say we are looking, the number is nine, right? Um, binary search, and what most of us do intuitively as humans, let's say, is it five? So, no, it's greater than five. Okay, so I'm gonna throw away one through five. I don't care about that. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna then go back and check, you know, one through four, because I know the number doesn't, the answer doesn't lie over there. So they're gone. Then, so what What I have left? I've got 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I'm going to say, okay, you know, is it, is it 8? And no, and I think we were looking for the number 9, right? Isn't that what I said? I don't even remember. We're looking for the number 9, all right? I'm saying, nope, it's greater than 9. Okay, but I can throw this out, right? And now I only have two numbers left. I'm saying, is it 9? Yes. So it took three steps, right, to get that versus, say, it could have taken nine steps in linear search. And that is exactly what we're going to implement in Apex today. And this, is, I think binary search and divide and conquer are just absolutely foundational tools as a software developer. So what we're going to do first, we have our first method, and this is where we're going to implement binary search in an iterative fashion. At the end, we'll also do it recursively. Uh, we return an integer, and that just represents the index where we found the value in our list. We take in a list of integers, in this case, uh, our list of search, and an integer representing the target value. And you know what? Let me turn that off. I have my debugger up, and we don't want that. Let's get rid of that text. It's gone now. Okay, so first let's give ourselves some variables that we need to work with. I'm going to say integer steps equals zero. And this, uh, and this is not something you need for binary search. We're just going to use this in some debug statements to see how many steps it takes us to solve the problem. Then I'm going to say integer left, and that's going to be equal to zero. All right, and then I need another integer that I'm going to call right, and right is going to be equal to, uh, what do we need? We need the size of the list. List, list to search, list to search dot size. All right, so right is going to be represent the right hand side of our list, and left is going to be, so respectively, right? We're going to use this to iterate through, and left would we would use to find the value, you know, at one, and right would be to find the value at ten. So we're going to say now we're going to give ourselves a while loop, and we're going to say while left is less than right. So that means we still have numbers left to search, right? As long as this condition is true, there's numbers left to search. There's things to look at. Otherwise, down here, we return a negative one. Say, so, yeah, we didn't find it. So next thing we need to do, we need to find the middle. Find the middle. And I'm going to say integer middle. And that is going to be equal to, uh, 
<laughs> how about pretty simple math? Left plus right divided by two. All right, we need a, we need an index to find the middle value of our list. Integer middle. Why am I getting a, uh, because I didn't spell integer right. Okay. And then we're going to say if list to search. if that value is equal to our target value, all right? So we're gonna get the, what is actually at the index of middle and list of search. And if that is the same as what we are looking for, we're gonna return that index. Return middle, all right. Then we're gonna say if, Let's say if target is less than list of search dot middle. So we know this condition is true. We can toss out the right hand side of the problem, right? So what we'll do, we're going to give right a new value. All right, so we're going to say if target is less than middle, well, we can then do um, right is equal to middle minus one. Else, what we need to do is throw out the left-hand side of the problem. So we're going to say left is equal to middle plus one. And we're going to walk through this in the debugger real quickly. And I think this will all make sense, but it's pretty simple code for what it's doing, right? We're going to take in a list of integers. We're going to find the middle value. If the value we're looking for is the same as what is at the middle index, we return that index. If the target is less, and remember our values are sorted, if it's less than list of what's at the middle index, we're going to get rid of the whole right-hand side of the problem. Else, right, we're going to say left, and we're going to get rid of the left-hand side of the problem. And we're going to do that until we increment through a few times and we find our problem. So let's, uh, let's compile this. Oh, this is just taking a little bit to compile here. All right. All right, great. So now let's go to Anonymous Apex. I'm just going to run this to everything should pass. All right, great. That works. So now let's step through it in the debugger. And I think this will make it really crystal clear how this is working. So we're going to create a list. And I just have a little utils class that generates a list of random numbers. Uh, we're going to give it a value, 100 values. And you know what we're going to do in this case? I think I want. So our list of search is going to be, we're going to say whatever it is at the 99th index. That's what we're searching for. All right. And in fact, you know, to make this even clearer, let's just, in fact, we're going to assign a value. So we're going to say, I'm going to say, Oh, well, that won't work because you know what? That won't work because these have to be sorted. So we'll just step through. We'll take whatever random stuff we have and let's run through this and the debugger and take a look at it. All right. So let's just step through till we get into the code. All right. So here we go. And let's open up our debugger. And so we steps are zero, left is one, right is 100. We're going to say, while well, this is true, right? And we remember, we were searching for anonymous apex. We were searching for the value at the 99th index, so the, whatever is last in the list. So now let's step through it. Well, 
Or no, it's not him. So we're going to find the middle. Middle is equal to 50. And we know we're, that this is not going to be true. Let's just search at the index of middle equals target. So we'll step over that and we go to, now we're going to throw away the left-hand side of the problem set. So we hit our else condition. Left is going to equal middle plus one. And now, right, if we scroll up here, we see, you know, left is, remember, left was zero. Left is now 51. Right is still 100. And we're going to step through again. Left is still less than right, so we haven't checked all our numbers. But we just threw away 50 of the value. We said we're, we're not there. We don't care about those anymore. We're going to get a new middle value. Middle is now 75. I'm going to check. Hey, is the, value at the, is the value at the middle index this time? Right? Is that the target we're looking for? We know it's not. And in this case, we're going to drop right back down to that else condition. And we're going to throw away the left-hand side of the problem again. Boom. All right, so now left is 76. Right? It was 51. Now it's 76. So again, we just threw away a whole big chunk of the problem. We're getting closer. Every time we're getting a little bit closer to the answer we're looking for. All right. So now our middle is 88. Once again, right, we know that the left, so we're throwing out the middle. So now, you see, like, the left keeps creeping up. Now it's at 89. Right is 100. We're going to check that again. We know we're going to drop right back down, throw away half of the problem set, 95. Throw away half the problem set again, 98. And that we found last time, we found, we got our result. So that is how anonymous, a, so if we back to our, that is how it's going to work in a iterative fashion. And now if we wanted to take a look through, and we wanted to do this recursively, Right, it is, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna do a um, public static integer. And I'm gonna say binary search recursive, but we're gonna take a little bit different list of parameters this time. We're still gonna need a list to search through. Integers. List to search. Now we still need an integer that's our target. But this time, to allow us to make these recursive function calls, we're also going to provide it with values for left and right. Left. Right. All right, we have our curly braces. Up down in. And now we need our first base case. Remember, if we don't have base cases in recursion, we are going to end up in infinite recursion, and we are going to overflow our stack and fail. We're going to say if base case, if left is greater than right, we know, and right, just like before, we didn't find a value. Return negative one. Not write negative one. Return. All right. Again, we need to find our middle. So, once again, find the middle. Target. We're going to start our risk condition before we found the middle. So we're going to say integer middle. And it was just like before. Left plus right divided by two. You know, if target equals at whatever we have with that middle index. We're going to return it. We found what we're looking for. Oh. 
else if target is less than list to search. No, I get my typo. At our middle index, we're going to make our recursive call. And we're going to say return binary search recursive. We're going to give it back the list of search. Same target, same left side and side value, but now we're going to change the value on the right. And that is going to equal middle minus one. Else. All right, here we go. Let's solve this one. Our last recursive statement. Else return binary search recursive the list we're searching for again, list to search target. And now we're going to change the value of left. Left is now we're going to throw away that left hand side of the problem set. So we're going to say it's middle plus one and right. All right, that should compile. So I say, depending on the call, right? We're just going to call recursive call. We're going to call that function again and each time we're either swapping, we're adjusting the value of the left hand side that we're going to look for or the right hand side. But same thing, allowing us to throw out half of that problem set every single time. So I've got some tests here to run. Let me find, it should return value recursive. We'll deploy this too. I'm going to make sure we so we're just going to run a quick one see if we find it all right so our tests are passing so that is it that is binary search that is implemented in both an iterative and a recursive method call. And this is a lot to take in. It really is. I mean, I'm looking at it and this video is only about 20 minutes long, but it's a lot to take in. If you've never done, if like you struggle with these, if you're trying to learn some of these data structures and algorithms for the first time, and that's fine. Uh, stick with it and just get a little bit better every day. I know that's always my own goal, just to just incrementally, slightly improve a little bit every day. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everybody.